I've been spending a lot of time thinking about coffee houses for the last five years、uh, because I've been kind of been on this quest to investigate this question of where good ideas come from. What are the environments that lead to unusual levels of innovation,、um, unusual levels of, of, of creativity? What's the kind of environmental? What is the space of creativity? And what I've been looking for is shared patterns, kind of signature behavior that shows up. Again and again in all of these environments, are there recurring patterns that we can learn from that we can take and kind of apply to our own lives, or our own organizations, our own environments to make them more creative and innovative? But in fact, what I would argue, and what you really need to kind of begin with, is this idea that an idea is a network on the most elemental level, right? I mean, this is what is happening inside your brain. An idea, a new idea, is a new network of neurons firing in sync with each other inside your brain. It's a new configuration. That is never formed before, right? And the question is, how do you get your brain into environments where these new networks are going to be more likely to form?、And、it turns out that, in fact, the kind of network patterns of the outside world mimic a lot of the network patterns of the internal world of the of the human brain. Now, that's a great idea, but what I'd like to say is that, in fact, this is a great metaphor for the way that ideas happen. We like to think our breakthrough ideas, you know, are like that $40,000 brand new incubator, state-of-the-art technology. But more often than not, they're cobbled together from whatever parts that happen to be around nearby. We take ideas from other people, from people we've learned from, from people we run into in the coffee shop, and we stitch them together into new forms, and we create something new. That's really where innovation happens. If you go back and look at the historical record, it turns out that a lot of Important ideas have very long incubation periods. I call this the slow hunch. We've heard a lot recently about, you know, kind of hunch and instinct and kind of blink-like、uh, sudden moments of clarity. But in fact, a lot of great ideas linger on sometimes for decades in the back of people's minds. They have a feeling that there's an interesting problem, but they don't quite have the tools yet. To discover them,、um, they spend all this time, you know, kind of working on certain problems. But there's another thing lingering there that they're interested in, but they can't quite solve. Now, the challenge for all of us is, how do you create environments that allow these ideas to have this kind of long half-life? Right? It's hard to go to your boss and say, "I have an excellent idea for our organization. It will be useful in 2020." We often talk about the value of protecting. Intellectual property, you know, building barricades, having secretive R&D labs,、um, patenting everything that we have, so that those ideas will remain valuable and people will be incentivized to come up with more ideas and, and the culture will be more innovative. But I think there's a case to be made that we should spend at least as much time, if not more, valuing the premise of connecting ideas and not just protecting them.